we see. <laughs> so that shit is also true. Like there's this yeah. anti-white, anti-rural, anti-Canadian, anti-American, anti-Western, anti-male vibe that I get where it comes from, but it, it gets too overzealous when they're talking to themselves. They're like, who can be more woke? It's like, we had enough, and this is, you know, and it's like, dude, you, like, there are people that are listening that are like, well, you know, those conservatives aren't completely wrong about being, um, you know, uh, discriminated against. And I mean, and I mean, straight up white, you know, you got to be, there's like a, a thin layer of like what you're, if you're white and a guy and straight and tall and thin and not ugly. Shit. You got, there's Jesse's like a, all that. <laughs> That's Jesse. <laughs> yeah. No, tell me the secret. Tell me the secret, Billy. Don't interrupt. <laughs> There's a thin layer of what you're allowed to say. Or you better shut the fuck up. You better be an ally and shut the fuck up, you know? <laughs> unless you, unless there's people are trying to get a job from you, right? So I've seen it, man. Like, they have to bend the knee, you know? And they have to say these crazy things. It's like, you actually believe that? <laughs> it's like on Clubhouse. Go on Clubhouse. Like that's a really good example because the way people talk when they're on stage on Clubhouse, they're just like, "Oh, my my grandmother is was Mohawk, and I've always tried to make films that." And this is like a multi million dollar white producer. It's like you you ain't Mohawk, dude. <laughs> like, I'm pulling from the like and like my I married you know in this like I married into this you know, Filipino family and I feel their strain and I want to, it's like, shut up, nerd, you know, <laughs> just shut your mouth, you know. We, we've so touched you... on that a bit, Jesse, go ahead. No, go ahead, Billy. No, I mean, this is, I mean, I, I, I do a podcast with a good friend who's a tall, white, <laughs> handsome, you know what I mean, straight guy, all this stuff. And we've touched on, on some of these things. And, um, I think it's really interesting. We've talked about melanin together, Jesse, and Jesse's actually, very carefully, uh, but I think with intelligence and care, it's like you said, you could talk about white privilege in a way that is rational and it's like self-evident, you know, and Jesse can do the same thing. What happens is some people, the incentives aren't always there to do that. And so you reduce people okay. to Karen and to Chad and it's like, right. these people are, in, are, it's better to actually find out more about these people. And did, anyway. So do you think, Maz, do you feel like we're just living in a, funny sh period that won't actually end up lasting long in the way we talk about each other in these reduced caricature ways or are you like do you think Jordan's onto something here that maybe we're at the we're opening the door to like bloody racial conflict or identitarian conflict no, no man I, well okay here's <laughs> the thing right like white people are going to be a minority that's not an alt right Thing. That's just statistically. But then white's going to change. People's identities are dynamic and they change. You know, like um, my wife's Italian. She was born here, but both sides Italian. She speaks Italian. I was born in Iran. Uh, she's pregnant right now. Congratulations. Our kid will... Congrats, thanks, man. Bro. Yeah, our kid will be half Italian, half Iranian. But basically, our kids, the kid's parents are both Canadian. They both are most comfortable. They dream in English. And when I lived in Brazil three years teaching English, by the end of it, I started dreaming in Portuguese. So mm. I dream in English. The kid's going to dream in English. So what is that kid? Uh, probably white, right? Maybe. Like, I don't know. It, it's up to the kid. So identity is so weird. But I think like in a big crowd of people, like, oh, there's a bunch of white people there. So it's like <sighs> identity is just such a complicated and annoying and also it can be very it's also very inspirational for art right like a lot of identity is in art and film it's in my shit my documentaries and my my uh, fiction um so I, I i think that we're going through a phase where race but there's also a fatigue people are getting a little bit fatigued like there's a lot of people that talk about this stuff but there's a lot of people that don't they, they just they're just not, they don't care. They're not clicking on, like I wrote this article about like cultural lame p opinion about this broth bar and this Chinese uh, blogger made a big deal out of it. And I wrote this article and I sent it to a bunch of friends. And some of them were like, dude, I, I, I usually don't read this stuff, but I'll read it because you wrote it. 
like a lot of people are just they're just not interested in in reading and tweeting and being part of these conversations because it's just like it's boring. So that's kind of what I realized. It's yeah. kind of operating it though, right? So they you know they might not read it, but they sort of play like you said if they're tall, white, straight, cis, they're being mindful as they navigate, but they they're not really trying to get into the intellectual sort of rigor of it. They don't want to or the battle, the political battle. So there there is like this race fatigue. Where some folks are like, yo, oh, man, like this is boring. You know, it was cool <laughs> at the beginning and it was badass, but like now we're the corporate, right? Like we're we're <laughs> yeah. the ones who are like corporate wokeism. Like we're the ones that, but they don't see it that way. They'll always be the underdog because there's romance there. Similar to Jordan, I'm the underdog. I'm being silenced, and these conservative media that portray me that way, I love it. Because I'm the underdog, but I won't stand David and Goliath, man. What's more romantic than that than to be a little dude and not giving a fuck? That's, that's the biggest story, right? That's what, that's what men want. They want to win, but they want to be like, I beat something bigger than me, mm -hmm. right? right? So that's, that's, the meta, that's the meta story here. Yeah, like Drake, Drake called his song started from the bottom, now we're here, despite the fact that he started clearly from the middle. Uh, you know, it's, like, it's, a, it's a better story if you start from the bottom. He grew up in Forest Hill. <laughs> yes. I live next to Forest Hill, but not in Forest Hill. I live next to Forest Hill over this bridge, over this, uh, this highway. I, I shouldn't say any more than that, but uh, <laughs> let's just say that the, the name of my building tries to pretend like it's part of Forest Hill. Right. But it's not. Everybody wants to be part of Four Seal, yeah, and that's where that guy's from. Yeah. <laughs> okay, upper middle, lower high. Started from upper middle. Now we're here. Oh, it's like, doesn't have the same <laughs> room, bro. Yeah, it doesn't work the same. Right? It doesn't work. <laughs>